quick tools. I've recently shared my work, Nissen Cup Noodles, and I get asked a lot about how I made it, especially the noodles. So I've decided to make this video to show you how I made it all. But first, I'd like to point out that this video is intended for intermediate artists and I will not be going through the whole process from start to finish, step by step. Instead, I'll do a walkthrough commentary of behind the scenes footage of the project throughout the production period. The first thing I made right at the beginning was the cup. It's pretty easy and straightforward. I simply added a cylinder and deleted the top face, then very quickly edited the model to follow the cup reference in the viewport. Then, I added a solidify modifier for thickness, beveled it, and subdivided it to finish it off. Lastly, I marked the sim in the middle and unwrapped the UV to follow the product label's texture. Now, my thoughts in the beginning were not to hand model the noodles because I knew they wouldn't look natural and would take away the realism. It's also not practical to model every single strand of noodle by hand. The only way to achieve believable noodles in my opinion was to either use soft body or cloth simulations. With that in mind, I started to make the noodles. I added a circle curve and modified it a bit to look like the shape of a noodle's cross section. Then I created another curve, which I am going to pick the circle as the geometry's bevel object. It is important to make sure that the noodle's curve is wavy like this if you want to make it look like the real noodles. I've also made sure that the wave pattern is tolerable so that I can use the array modifier to adjust the length of the noodles. Once that's done, I duplicate it and keep one as a master backup for when I need to create more noodles, while I convert the other curve into a mesh so that I can use it for simulation tests. There was a lot of trial and error to get the result I was looking for. In the end, I've decided to use cloth simulation instead of soft body for the noodles, as it was easier to use and faster to simulate for me. What's worth mentioning is that I initially modeled the cup and noodles to actual scale. Because of this, the noodles are so small and thin that the self-collisions would break the simulation altogether even though I've set the distance to the minimum. I had to scale everything up around 30 times larger just to get the self-collision to work properly. In the end, here are the settings that I used for my noodle simulation. First, choose the silk preset. Then, enable internal springs with default settings. This helps to preserve the volume inside the noodles so that they don't get flattened during the simulation and retain the waviness of the noodles. Don't forget to enable self-collision too. Of course, we don't want overlapping noodles. I created a low-res funnel model to act as the collision object instead of using the actual cup model to speed up simulation speed. Once I'm done with the testing and ready to make the noodles, I went into edit mode and duplicated a single strand of noodle to multiple strands with some randomization. With the first layer of noodles done, I went on to make the veggie cubes which are the corn and carrots. A trick that I used to make the carrot cubes look random is by using a noise texture in the displace modifier with global coordinates. The materials are procedurally generated and are very simple to make with the use of noise, gradient and Voronoi nodes. I then duplicated the veggies and joined them together into one object so that I could also simulate them dropping onto the noodles. There's also a plane that I simulated onto the noodles which acts as a bits of green veggies. The noise node does a really good job in making the bits look natural and random. To really get the veggies to stick onto the noodles, I added the string wrap modifier so that it wraps around the noodles tightly. Oh yes, the soup is just a simple cylinder. To make it look natural and believable, I displaced the surface just a tiny bit so that it isn't totally flat. And to make it even better, I added string wrap to it as well but it only affects the vertices where they are near or overlap the noodles. This will make it look as though there is some liquid interaction between the noodles and the soup. When it comes to materials, I used Voronoi to create the oil droplets and also mixed on top of it the same notes that I used for the bits of veggie previously. I then added a few more strands of noodles to cover some of the veggie cubes and make the noodle islands look more evenly distributed across the surface of the soup. Next, I started to model the fork based on the references of the product. It was hand modeled from a plane until I got the shape of the fork correct, before I added the solidify and subdivision modifiers to finish it off. Again, more noodles were added and some were carefully placed in between the teeth of the fork so that they'll rest nicely on it after the simulation. 
There were some parts of noodles that didn't look right after the simulation, so I switched into scalp mode to fix those areas. As a finishing touch, a few more veggies were hand placed onto the fork. I also added a cup lid and simulated the smoke for the steam to enhance it a little bit more. With everything done, it was time to set it up for render. I know I could achieve far more realistic renders with cycles, but the intention from the start for me was to challenge myself to create photorealistic CG foot renders with EV. It is a simple 3 point light setup with a red limbo background. Needless to say, enabling the depth of field also makes the extreme close up shots look a lot better and contributes to the overall realism of the renders. And that's all. Thank you for watching this walkthrough tutorial. I'm sorry that I didn't have more time to make a more detailed tutorial for beginners, but you can download the blend file for this project at my gum road if you are interested to find out all the other details or settings that I've missed or did not explain in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow my work on ArtStation if you want to find out what I'll be cooking up next in the future. See you again in the next video. Goodbye. Hi! <laughs> subscribe!